What's up, y'all? Talon here. Today, we're going to be taking on the Pokemon Showdown Best of Three High Ladder for the Regulation G format featuring top teams in the metagame. Today, we're going to be using a team created by Marco Fierro to get top four at the Stockholm Regional. It was a very stacked European tournament, so uh, definitely lends a lot of credence to this team that it was able to get not only just top four, as well as a 13-1 record for Marco, and then a eighth place finish in, with the exact same team in the top eight uh, by Lorenzo Alemania. So really impressive performance from this team and the players accompanying it. So I figured that I'd take it on the Pokemon Showdown ladder, um, see what makes it special, see what uh, you guys can take from that, essentially just seeing it played in a high level best of three environment. And yeah, gonna be going to the team breakdown now, but if you wanna use the team for yourself, I have the Pokepaste with the EV spreads in the description below. If you enjoy these type of videos, please subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, with all that being said, let's get into it now. So breaking down the team on a very high level, we'll definitely see a lot of the EV spreads take effect in the video, but I'm going especially defensive Calyrex Ice to be able to take a Draco Meteor from a Maridon, uh, a Choice Specs Modest Maridon. Aside from that, it's pretty standard. We're going Adamant just in case we play against a uh, Brave Calyrex Ice. This Calyrex Terra type water is kind of optimized to win the mirror. If you're forced to tear it into grass against an Amoongus, you kind of lose to other Calyrex with the Glacial Lance. If you go fire in the face of Willow Wisp and Cinnaroy, you lose the higher horsepower. So this kind of meets in the middle while also just being a very good Terra type against pretty much everything, but it does have a bit of a weakness to Maridon. You can't Terra out of the, uh, you can't go Terra Grass in front of a Electro Drift, so you are susceptible to Terra Electric, Electro Drift knockouts in that aspect. So uh, beyond that, the Urshifu, very standard, Terra Dark. This one's adamant, just trying to max out on your damage. There's not a lot falling in that between 149 and 163, I believe, speed tier. So just the extra power on the Terra Dark Wicked Blows can be important. This is going to be your main option against kind of trickier matchups, where they have a really good option against your Trick Room mode. You can lead the Urshifu, be a little bit tricky with Amoongus and Incineroar on lead, and cause them to get in some, some awkward positions when they just thought you would lead the Calyrex or something similarly slow. Raging Bolt is up next, and it's an interesting set. Very defensive AV set uh, with Electroweb to enable the Urshifu to outspeed things like Calyrex Shadow and knock it out with a Wicked Blow, uh, but also just chip things down so that the Calyrex Ice can outspeed it later on. Uh, like Electroweb into High Horsepower, uh, if you tear electric, I'd have to imagine it gets pretty close to a knockout on most Incineroar. Uh, but just being able to chip in Incineroar early with the Bolt Switch is really important. Thunderclap especially helpful with a team this slow. The Terra Electric uh, Thunderclap can clean up things that the Wicked Blow or the Glacial Lance has not done earlier in the game. And then Draco is just a really solid option when you feel like you're going to be leaving the field soon. Go for a Draco. Um, and take as much damage as you can, especially against other Raging Bolts. Next is the Amoongus, which is not particularly special. It's a very uh, off defensive one on the physical side, pairing well with the Rocky Helmet. Going into the Terra type, it's Terra Fire instead of Terra Water, which is the more conventional Terra type. It has, shares a lot of the same resistances, but Terra Fire instead of Terra Water means that you're not going to be weak to a Rillaboom. If you're forced to Terra, you can't just be wood hammered and swiped off the field, which can be a common pathing for a lot of teams with Rillaboom to have. Just force the Amoongus Terra to Terra Water and then knock it out with wood hammer, but Marco avoiding that uh, possibility entirely and is able to tear it into fire and also be able to beat basically Incineroar and Rillaboom at the same time. Next up is Incineroar, which is the same Jolly Max speed set that Leonard Craft also got top four in the Indianapolis Regional Championship. So definitely something to be wary of. Uh, if you see a Citrus Berry Incineroar on a Calyrex Ice team, they tend to be max speed these days. It's not guaranteed. You could queue up into a slower one, but definitely be on guard in game one, try and check the Intimidate, which one's activating first, because notably this thing can outspeed a Modest Pelipper. Um, so there's a lot of situations like that where you should just pay attention to when its Intimidate is activating relative to the rest of the abilities on the field. Beyond that, it's no Flare Blitz on this one, which is kind of interesting, no other fire coverage on the team, but going knockoff, trying to knock off things like clear amulets on other Calyrex Ice, Taunt, really good into Amoongus because we aren't safety goggles. And outside of that, we have no immunities outside of Goldengo to Amoongus, so the taunt's really important. Amoongus can be a problem if you if it catches you in Trick Room and is kind of a liability for the team. Uh, it definitely makes you more hesitant to go into Trick Room because you have to deal with the Amoongus very early so that you can't, uh, basically, because you won't be able to taunt it in Trick Room, essentially. Last up is Goldengo, which I'm still trying to get a good handle on. I think it's definitely a very targeted matchup mom. It's Terra Normal, so you're trying to very obviously target into Calyrex Shadow, being able to Terra against a Choice Spec set away from the Astro Barrage weakness is pretty cool. Awesome late game uh, potential there. Outside of that, it is a nasty plot leftover set with the Make It Rain Shadow Ball, pretty standard all around. And then I've EV'd it to outspeed a um, Modest Fluttermane or Maridon, or I guess even Adamant Chen Pao or Adamant Karidon after an Electroweb and be able to hit it with a Shadow Ball or a Make It Rain in exchange. So 
Beyond that, it's a lot of defensive bulk and then just a bit of special attack to be hitting a little bit harder. I think the key matchup for the Goldango beyond the Calyrex Shadow is definitely the Zamazenta though. Calyrex Ice is known to struggle very hard against that, but Goldango on the other hand does very, very well against it. You can almost treat your Goldango as your restricted against Zamazenta team, so protect it very carefully, try and end game, basically knock out all the Pokemon next to Zamazenta. If you've gotten an Intimidate on it, the Heavy Slams aren't going to be doing that much and you can just nasty plot. Protect, stall it out, then go until you're in a range to 2-it KO their Zamazenta with Shadow Ball, and their Heavy Slams just aren't doing much damage, so you'll definitely win that 1v1 most of the time if you have a reasonable amount of HP left. So once again, congratulations to Marco and Lorenzo on their big finishes at Stockholm. Excited to take this team on the ladder. As always, Poke Paste with the EV spreads in the description below. If you guys enjoyed these videos, please subscribe to the channel. And yeah, with all that being said, let's hop into the battles now. Okay, up against a Coridon team. Definitely looks really strong. Uh, a lot of good elements on this team. Looks pretty well built. Might be similar to the team that Luka Tredgut got a uh, top 16 performance with, but it is bulk up, no flame charge Coridon, which is annoying for us, actually. Um, they're reasonably, you know, they're not low on ladder. They have Will-O-Wisp and Cinderor. I'd say this is actually a pretty difficult matchup, but we'll do our best. Goggles, yeah, okay, this could be tough, but... Clear Amulet also means we can't Electroweb them, which is a little dicey. I could see Fluttermane, Coridon, led straight up, or Incineroar, so gotta be on the on guard for that. Uh, do, do, do. Definitely wary of all that. I think I kind of have to go Calyrex. I might have to just eat the burn and try and out-damage them still. Um, I could taunt them too, and I might go for that. Buterago's taunt is cute, but they're Flare Blitz on there. They're not knockoff, they are Flare Blitz, so they can really... Yeah, I'm forced to tear water. Not a great matchup, I'd say, but definitely playable. I might need healing in the back. Spore is a pretty good weapon if I can knock off their Ensign, and then I'd probably just go Raging Bolt in back. Pretty slow start. Uh, they're leading Fluttermane, which is interesting. We should outspeed them and be able to go for a taunt if we want to. Or a... Do they have taunt? It's just a Will-O-Wisp, right? Okay. This to me feels like... Glacial Lance. Fake out? Or knock off or taunt? I don't know. I'm the faster Ensign, so if they burn the Terra, that's kind of fine. I think I'm just going to go right for Trick Room and fake out. Uh, should I Glacial Lance? I think I'm going to Glacial Lance fake out. I don't think they're going to Shadow Ball here. They're going to Terra Ghost, so Glacial Lance is going to do a bit more damage. We could have taunted. Yeah, they just Moonblast that slot, which makes sense. Hopefully they miss Will-O-Wisp. No dice, though. Yeah, I could have taunted there, but it didn't feel super necessary. Um, they're pretty weak now. I might just go for another one and switch into Amoongus here. No reason to set up Tailwind yet, I think, or Trick Room yet. Uh, especially since they, they can't knock this off, so as long as I take a knockout on Fluttermane, eventually I'll have enough HP to be okay here. And if they Flare Blitz my Ensign, that is all good with me. They're going to take a bunch of damage. I could Trick Room, though. Uh, if I have Amoongus in, Ogre Pond's a little annoying. I haven't Terrored yet. Let's just Trick Room switch. Because they could Flare Blitz me here. Okay, switching to Chen Pao. I would have knocked them out with Glacial Lance, which is interesting. They're Moon Blasting there. That's fine. I think they're probably going to protect that slot. Bring in Incineroar, maybe. I haven't knocked that out. Knocked that off, which is annoying, but should be fine. I'm doing 20% per hit. So if I can tag it a little bit, I'll be okay. I'm just going to spore the Chen Pao, even though it's likely Ensign switches in here, I think that's fine. Just need to put this to sleep because Raging Bolt's looking pretty strong and they've already burned their Terra. Oh, they let me attack, which is super good for me. I can probably just Pollen Puff the Chen Pao and Glacial Lance and do a bunch of damage that way. They have Terra, it's probably Coridon in the back. Like, I'm feeling pretty good. Everything's getting slowly in range of a Thunderclap, and they don't get the double protect on the Chen Pao, so we get another Glacial. It's not going to knock them out, though, which is annoying. They Parting Shot, all good with me. I'm at a range where I can probably just Glacial Lance Pollen Puff through this. And their instant took 31 from Glacial Lance on... Yeah, that's pretty interesting. 
I don't think Sucker Punch will knock me out. So I'm going to go for a... Uh, I think Self Pollen Puff, because the Spore is really obvious. They might not get knocked out. Or they might get knocked out. I think I'll live a Sucker Punch and be able to 1v1 this game with Bolt in the back. So if they Flare Blitz me, that's fine. They'll take so much recoil. I think that's okay. And they don't even wake up. So we get pretty lucky on that three turn sleep and end up healing. And we finally get that boost I was talking about. Fluttermane's in range of a knockout. I mean, Glacial Lance knocks out Insin, it knocks out the Flutter, and they have to either eat a Spore or a Glacial. So I am pretty happy with this turn of events. Should I just set up Trick Room here? I think Spore is fine. Like, I could double protect. But yeah, they have to Flare Blitz to take the knockout. And we, even though we got will o -Wisp, we got the plus one and we knocked out the Crowdon in one hit. That felt pretty good. Uh, I think them locking into the Moonblast made things very easy on my Amoongus switch in later on. And you'll see through the course of these battles, I feel like that Amoongus is actually your, your secret Trick Room Sweeper against a team without a safety goggles. You get Trick Room up, and then Amoongus plus Calyrex is such a scary combo. Um, they weren't Lash Out Chen Pao, I don't believe. I think I'm going to leave the same thing. They got the turn one right, and they still lost pretty convincingly, I think. Although I did play aggressive on my Noterra. I didn't reveal whether it was Raging Bolt or... I feel like Raging Bolt's always correct. Just because they need a bulk up to be doing meaningful damage with Collision Course to me. They leak right on, fair enough. But this should just be a... Um... I feel like it's just fake out into the Coridon Trick Room, honestly. Because Flare Blitz is going to do damage for sure, but they'll do damage to themselves. I don't, I don't really feel the need to protect here. We get a little chip on the Coridon and they, we trade fake outs. Fair enough. Um, that's fine though, because I still should be able to go Trick Room. Should I tear a water here or just let them take the damage? I think Collision Course is more likely here, but they could Flare Blitz me. In that case, would that be too big of a deal? I think I do need to hit the Incineroar a couple times in Trick Room, so I'm going to go for a Protect Switch. Um, yeah, they're going for Terra Fire, so they'll do a lot of damage. And they're bulking up. That's interesting. And they Parting Shot my Amoongus, not getting will o -Wisp off. That feels like kind of a mistake. Uh, Collision Course is going to do a lot of damage, but that's fine. I can still just go for Glacial Ant Spore into them. Well, instant switch out could be tricky. They don't have leftovers healing though, so I think that's fine. Yeah, I feel okay about this. I think Glacial Lance is going to do a lot. I could Pollen Puff just because I think there's like pretty much no world where they just give me... What, this is just double protect, right? Could I punish that in any way? Um, Probably not. They should just be double protect switch next turn. So can I cover th for that effectively? I don't think so. I guess I can't switch the next turn. Okay, they follow me, so I could have gone for a Pollen Puff for more damage, but we 2 kill them anyway, so I think we're kind of chilling. This feels to me like probably just the same play. Um, they're eventually going to have to hit me, which is cool. Um, they can double protect now, which is annoying. I think I'm just going to self Pollen Puff Glacial Lance or High Horsepower. Oh, I'll hit them first if I do that. The damage is non-zero on the Coridon, so I think I'll just keep going for that. What are the odds they get me Spore here? I'm going to Pollen Puff in case they switch to Flutter. Okay, double protect, we catch them, and now we get Glacial Lance plus... Um, we can... Oh, I'm just going to Rage Powder here, actually. They'll have to take a lot of damage if they go for Flare Blitz, so this feels good. And they won't take a knockout. Collision Course, that's going to do a lot. Honestly, not even that much, though. But we have the boost now. Their Sun's gone, so their Collision Course damage is kind of non... Uh, not super threatening. They'd have to bulk up again, which is fine, because I can just go for... Protect Switch, I think. And then I'll guarantee... Not guarantee, but I'll get Trick Room up again. In a pretty solid spot. 
I could just Rage Powder Spore. They get a bulk up again. Is that that big of an issue? I don't think so. But I think I'm going to switch. I'm going to play a little aggressively. Just because they've been playing pretty passive. And they go for the Protect in the face of Spore. And they Parting Shot my Ensign, which is an interesting call. And go Chin Pao. That's all fine with me. Because I can go for Trick Room plus Fake Out here. That's kind of interesting. They'd be threatening a knockout on me there, but not the case anymore. Okay, they forfeit. Yeah, that was pretty dominant. Um, just kind of showing the value of just the Calyrex against, even with the Terrifier bulk up Coridon, we were kind of just able to consistently chip them. Uh, if they weren't Willow Wisp in Sin, this battle would have been even easier, but even in the first battle when they got the Willow Wisp off, that's not necessarily Calyrex just, you know, losing at that point. If you get everything in range of even minus two Glacial Lance, if you're chipping with your partners as well, putting things to sleep, eventually you get to a plus one boost and then you're basically only minus one, uh, which is still hit, you know, minus one Glacial Lance is still pretty deadly. So really happy about that battle. I think we leveraged our defensive tools and we never even had to bring out our Raging Bolt, which given they Terra'd uh, the Karite on that game, we could have gone for a Terra Electric Thunderclap, uh, just bullied the Chen Pao with Intimidate and found our way out of that game regardless, I think so. Really happy about that one. Up against, I believe this is Suica's team. Um, unfortunately, I think Marco lost this one in uh, in Swiss. Not in Swiss. I think he won in Swiss, but lost in top cut. Uh, Taunt Fluttermane makes things definitely difficult, but we could always just lead our own Amoongus. Oh, I think I remember now. The issue with the... Um, yeah, the issue is the Amoongus makes things difficult for our trick room mode because they can always just lead pretty offensively and have amoongus in the back and i guess we can trade spores in that case and i'm probably gonna aim for that i think yeah that feels correct yeah that feels kind of right i could also lead raging bolt urshifu but if they lead the rocky helmet amoongus i'm kind of cooked against that so tricky spot. I think that Calyrex is kind of good in some circumstances. I don't think it's going to be a Mungus lead that lo loses really hard to Calyrex. So what do we do? They're pretty high ranked. I think I can play pretty aggressively turn with one with Raging Bolt and then clean up with Calyrex in the back plus Fake Out. That's going to be my goal of this game. They lead Flutter to Rapagos, which is not what I was expecting, but probably better for me, I think. So I can go for Electroweb Protect. I could. Um, I wonder if Terra Fairy Moonblast plus Terra Starstorm knocks me out. That would be my concern here. Yeah, they're going Icy Wind, probably Terra Blast into my Raging Bolt. It crits, and we miss the Tropicos. So that's actually worst case, I think. Yeah. Because I needed to be able to close combat them that turn. So that's really unfortunate. But it is what it is. Um, at this point, we could... Thunderclap. Hmm. That's really bad. Because they'll still outspeed my Urshifu, unfortunately. We crit the Flutter, I guess, but... I don't know. It doesn't really feel like it matters that much in this battle. I can Thunderclap, Sucker Punch, and I think I might go for that. Are they going to Terrastalize Icy Wind here? That feels pretty safe. Yeah, I could have Thunderclap. Ah, that stinks. Okay. Not over yet. Let's keep playing it out. We move first. We'll see if they target into my Urshifu with the... Yeah, they just take the double knockout. Yeah, that's frustrating. Missing the Electroweb there just makes that turn one so uneven, unfortunately. I think I'm going to Glacial Lance Fake Out, though, because not a lot else we can do. If we get the boosts up, I think we could win. The problem is they'll force me with Chiyu to make some plays I'm not happy about. Huh, okay. We could catch them switching out, maybe, and high horsepower attack. But I think they'll be able to lock Terra Hyper Beam and win regardless, so that's not good. Glacial Lance, Fake Out, or Knock Off. I kind of want to knock them off, because I could see Terrapagos coming in. I could see Chi Yu coming in. Yeah, this feels kind of like a lost cause, but we'll try and play it out. I'll play it simple. Yeah, I could have knocked out that Chi Yu with high horsepower Fake Out. But I'm not sure if that was correct. We might have to dodge an overheat. Are they Dark Pulse? They are, so they can just lock that 
and go for Terra Star Storm, and I think we'll lose. We've at least broken their Terra Shell, but yeah, it's not good. Um, maybe we're faster than them and we can get a knockoff off. That'd be cool. But I'm not counting with on it. Uh, Beads of Ruin makes things very, very difficult for us here. Yep, they end the game this turn. With Dark Pulse, Terra. Yeah, GG. Like, the Tropagos would have been knocked out if I got an Electroweb off turn one, which is frustrating, but it is what it is. I could have also Thunderclapped the Fluttermane. Yep. But that's kind of the sign of a bad matchup. If you have to go for those plays where you just take like 90% of your Pokemon turn one with them getting the read wrong, that means they can just Moonblast me, Terra Star Storm next game. So definitely a tricky matchup, probably worth advising. I think the Goldengo slot could probably be tooled to something else to beat this uh, type of team a little bit better because Terrapagos with Amoongus is definitely a big issue here. Um, Yeah, I'm going to go Amoongus... Calyrex here, switch it up just a bit, and Bakmon's, I guess, still Urshifu. I might bait them by not going for Trick Room, I think. Yep, same lead. I kind of want to protect on some level, but I mean, it's probably just going to be Rage Powder. So I'm going to go for a Rage Powder Glacial Lance and maybe Chip the Fluttermane in Sucker Blunt range. That's probably my best case here. I could get very cute and protect Trick Room, but if they taunt the Calyrex and Terra Star Storm it, I almost lose the game on the spot, so that's not really great. Um, and if I don't Rage Powder, they can easily go for Dark Pulse, Terra Star Storm or something and knock me out. But yeah, they taunt the Amoongus, they Terra Star Storm, but we break their shell uh, and crit their Terrapagos. That's definitely very appreciated. Uh, they might be able to knock me out now. I think I'll just go for a Switch Protect, though. And threaten Sucker Punch in the next turn. Force them to Icy Wind, I think, is solid. Or is it? Thunderclap. Switching into my uh, Raging Bolt would probably have been better there. That's actually a really good play. Well done. Okay. Now I have to Thunderclap. Yeah, awesome catch on the switch in. They would have done enough on the Raging Bolt as well. But yeah, that was an excellent play. I can't really Thunderclap now. Um... Yikes. I'm going to Volt Switch Glacial Lance and hope that I live a hit. This is definitely trending very badly for me. I could have set up Trick Room there, I guess, but yeah, it's a bad spot for, for me. They might be saving a Terra on something, but if they get damage on me, I will just lose. Thunderclap, Glacial, or Volt Switch Glacial. Let's go Volt Switch. Yeah, they taunt, so we catch them there. They go for the Star Storm. It does a lot, but we'll, we'll at least take a double KO here and... I'd be more confident if I had Urshifu in the back, honestly, because now they can Heat Wave me. Oh, it is Amoongus. Okay. All right. Terra Bug's interesting, but I think Raging, Raging Bolt might be able to do it for us. I just go Rage Powder, Terra Glacial, I want to say. Is there any reason to Rage Powder here when I could just switch? If Heat Wave knocks me out, that's trouble, no doubt. If they're like fast Amoongus, that'd be tricky. They're protecting there, makes sense. They go for the Dark Pulse and knocks out my Amoongus, but now they should lose to Electroweb Glacial. I could Thunderclap them, but I think they'd have to flinch me with Dark Pulse. I should outspeed anyways. This should be a game. Yeah, Amoongus was definitely a little bit better of a lead for me, but if they lead Chiyu in the next game, then it becomes a bit of a problem. Okay, they crit me, and we at least hit, but that's frustrating. I don't think they'll be able to Pollen Puff me to win. Bug Terra, speeding the game up. Oh, they're trying to do more damage with Pollen Puff. That's cute. I don't think it's correct, though. Because uh, now Volt Switch does more. Okay, fair enough. I think Volt Switch, Draco knocks them out. They protect. Now they get the guaranteed hit on me. Uh, Volt Switch isn't doing much. If they get a max sleep, they could win. Honestly. 15 per turn. I probably have to go for Draco or just hope I catch them on the wake. All right. Uh, Volt Switch. Draco should do a knockout here. They protect most likely, and I have to hit the Draco. Okay. We catch them, and we win game two. Really close one. Definitely a high-ranked opponent. They're about the same rank as us. 1639 versus 1630. Points on the line, baby. 
So I think if I preserve priority and hit stuff with Glacial Lances, that's still my goal this game. So I'm going to go with the same guys. They do the same thing themselves. Fair enough. I can Trick Room, but I think that loses to Amoongus, so I'm never going to do that. Um, are they going to tear a Star Storm here? What they do that last game? They went for Taunt or something. Taunt into the Amoongus plus Pollen Puff. That makes sense. Um... They could just switch in Chi Yu hard here, which I don't love. I think I'm going to go for Self Pollen Puff just to. Well, I kind of want to spore them. What's Rage Powder really doing for me? Not much. Okay, fair enough. So Rage Powder wouldn't have been effective there, but Pollen Puff would have. Ah. I kind of forgot about that option. Okay, that's fair. Should I switch? Sack something? Probably so. Can Thunderclap, but then they'll knock me out. I think I'd let them knock me out here on Urshifu again. Yeah, they go for the Star Storm, which is fair, because we can knock them out with close combat, and that seems like a solid play to me. Just straight up KO them. If they're timid, they'll outspeed me and maybe knock out with Heat Wave, but I think that's probably what we have to go for. And then Terra Water, most likely Glacial Lance, just chip them in range of Sucker Punch, or should I preserve my... Nah, let's maybe chip the... Flutter in the back, I think. I think we'll live the Dark Pulse. Yeah, Amoongus comes in. That's why I went for the Terra. Oh, but they chip me with the... Heat Wave actually doesn't bring me low enough. That's interesting. I want to see how much Dark Pulse from Chi will do. If they're modest. I feel like that's timid because I lived that. Oh, it's timid because... Yeah, I think I lived that. Terrapa goes out. They can knock me out now, which is annoying. But... I can maybe still win this. If they're forced to Terra, I don't think I'll live a close combat. I could double Electroweb them for some damage. Being slower here is bad. Yeah, good. Good play on the Rocky Helmet switch. I definitely was a little too anxious there. I could have close combated the Chiyu. There's no way they leave that open. That was just a bad mistake on my part. All right, let's dig out of it. I think I'm going to go Protect... Switch, maybe? Nah, because they can just Dark Pulse that slot, and I'll fold to two, I think. I think I let them knock me out here and protect. Yeah, they Dark Pulse the Archfu slot, so we would have gotten caught there. Um, I think we'll lose the game if we let Urshifu go down, no matter what. So I kind of have to go for Electroweb Switch, I want to say. Which is pretty yikes, but what I have to go for, I think. If they Heat Wave here, good play. But we should Electroweb knock out Flutter on the switch. And then maybe knock them out with a Thunderclap on the Chiyu. So it's definitely coming down to the wire, but good game so far. They Dark Pulse the Amoongus, which I think is a mistake. We hit that, so now we can Thunderclap close combat, I want to say. Uh, are we faster than them? We are not. Okay. Switch is very obvious on them. Do I read it? Um, no, because I should be able to Thunderclap. If this knocks out with Thunderclap, then I can always just Thunderclap their Flutter as well. So we might have dug our way out. Yep, out to Flutter. Still fine. We can just Thunderclap Sucker, I think. They have used their Terry. Terry. Eh, Terra, sorry. Okay, heart's beating pretty hard. Definitely a really hard fought battle here. But I think, unless they stall out all my Thunderclap Sucker Punches, we should be good. And they don't have any setup. They, and I think the worst they could do is get me into a spot where it's a 50-50, which given how this game progressed from the start, I will be fine with. Okay, that's fine. Because I think I, once again, Thunderclap you, Taunt doesn't really do much for you, and Close Combat KOs. Unless they're max speed Terrapagos. That would be a very interesting, um, perfect set for them, actually. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I don't know what they run on these sets, but if it's timid, I lose here. Based on the damage against Amoongus, I kind of think it's modest. But that's something I should know my rules a little bit better for. Otherwise, I wouldn't have navigated to this spot. Might have gone for Electroweb on one of those turns. Protect on Flutter. Thunderclap, are you faster? They're not. Okay, cool. So Timid Terrapagos is something I've seen popping up. Deliberately to outspeed Urshifu by one point. But at this point, it should just be 
I mean, they can try and stall me out, actually. But I think Electroweb. They've burned their Protect. I think we just go for Thunderclap. Sucker Punch. Yeah, and they don't even go for it. So I think even if that looks like I have to go for like a bunch of Sucker Punch, Thunderclap 50-50s, good game to them. Really high-ranked opponent. So glad we were able to take that win. I think what it would have come down to is on the turn that Fluttermane... Or they've both burned double protects, essentially. Um, I can go for Sucker Punch into the Flutter and Electroweb, and Fluttermane will have to get knocked out. If it doesn't... if it, They'll need to Moonblast my Raging Bolt, because Dark Pulse won't be doing that much. And if I hit both my Electrowebs, then I should be good to win the game, even if they do get a read right on one of those turns. So was able to pull that back. I think the Terrapagos team is very, very scary. I would have been a little bit more scared of Chi Yuan lead, but that was kind of just dependent on my adjustments. Um, so, awesome game. All right, up against really hyper-offensive Calyrex Shadow. I feel like these sort of teams... Oh, even with the substitute on this guy, that's very scary. Okay. Um, Generally, a good answer against this is Calyrex... Or my Urshifu against Calyrex, just because I can at least threaten the Ndidi with a Wicked Blow. Maybe tear out of some stuff. I think Trick Room is reasonably good for me here. Like, Calyrex Trick Room. Choice Scarf Urshifu with the Dark Terra. That's interesting. That's going to be tough to beat. Uh, back Monomungus, I think, has to come to heal myself up and get Spores off in Trick Room. And then I need to switch in if they Encore and don't lead in DD. And that will probably just have to be... Um, knockoff Pressure is pretty weak here. I'm going to go with the Raging Bolt. But yeah, this is one of the problems with this team. So much of the damage is loaded on the Urshifu and the Calyrex. When you get into a spot where you can't use that so easily, uh, it can get a little dicey. Let's turn the timer on, just put some pressure. Don't see a lot of Choice Scarf Urshifu though. Thankfully there's no Taunt, otherwise this battle would be very tricky. But I think turn one I'll probably just end up going for... Uh, maybe Wicked Blow. Yeah, that'll probably be my play. Just Wicked Blow the Calyrex Glacial Lance. Because follow me, Astro Barrage probably knocks me out. If they wanted to, they could go for a Terra Reed. Well, if they go for that Terra Reed, would I still be fine with Raging Bolt Urshifu in the back? Yeah, against these hyper-offensive teams, any time you get in team preview to consider their most likely leads is important. And they lead Whimsicott, which is fair, but not threatening a knockout. Which is fine. Uh, do you Expanding Force Shadow here? I think this is just Glacial Lance Protect for me. And yeah, they can't even Encore me. Yeah, this feels pretty correct. Or I could just get the Protect off and then be threatening a Wicked Blow on the Calyrex. But I think what I'm going to go for is... Glacial Lance, Protect, or Wicked Blow. Let's just Protect. They're switching to Urshifu, which is interesting. They won't be threatening me with a lot of damage, and yeah, they tried to break my Sash. This is a very good lead for me, or this is a very good turn, because now I can freely go for Trick Room. Um, Honestly, Sucker Punch into Whimsicott, and I think I will go for that. I could Wicked Blow their Urshifu as well, but I think this is just better. So if they bring something in, I can Wicked Blow it, and they can't knock out my Urshifu here. The Terra Darking, fair. They go for the Terra Dark Wicked Blow, it looks like. Wouldn't have even knocked out my Calyrex from full. <clears throat> Probably a roll, but good to know. And they forfeit that game. Yeah, that's kind of how hyper-offensive teams can go. But you're seeing the value of the Urshifu Dark in pretty much all these battles. It's just, I guess not the Karadon one, but against trickier matchups, it's really... Uh, difficult to deal with both Calyrex and a Focus Ash Pokemon in the team. Uh, we saw Leonard Craft with Focus Ash Amoongus as well. I think people keying in on Focus Ash plus Calyrex being a potent combo. I'm going to go with the same stuff. As long as I don't Trick Room first turn, we're fine. That's interesting. Um, yeah, this is fine. I think I'm just going to go for Trick Room again. They could Moonblast double me, which is not the worst. I should probably just Trick Room and then maybe switch out. Because they can't take a knockout here, I don't think. They could tear a fairy. Um, I feel like it's tear a fairy moonblast on me, most likely. So I kind of want to get my Amoongus in. I have a free spore on that slot. Unless they switch in the Ogre Pond, so that's fine. I'm going to go with that. 
Yeah, they Terra Fairy and they Double Moon Blast me. Fair enough. Uh, now they can Encore me. But if they do that, that's okay. I think I'm going to sack my Raging Bolt, I think. Doesn't seem that valuable, this battle. Yeah, let's just Spore that. Okay, Fair Switch. They go for that. But this is the value of the Volt Switch. Now we can Volt Switch and... Nothing can really hit us that hard. They can Spore us, I guess. But... Or, um... Yeah, they can do go for something. They can Encore me into Spore, which would probably be fine by me, because I'm just going to break their Focus Sash here, and... Mm, yeah, I think I'm just going to... Spore, right? I think locking into Spore is okay here. Yeah, because they can't disable this. We get the Spore on the switch. Ogre Pond's not threatening us at all. They Moonblast the Raging Bolt, but Special Attack doesn't matter. We drop the Sash, and now we get this off. Um, what I can do now is just freely Glacial Lance and knock out the Amoongus, and then I should win the rest of the battle with just Pollen Puff, right? They switch in the Ogre Pond. They're not going to take a turn of sleep, and they go for Protect there. Maybe, I don't really know what they're hoping for, but it doesn't work, because we can just go for this again. Yeah, Fluttermane's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with the Calyrex. I think you need a really strong spread move to beat Calyrex Amoongus here. Yeah, they go for that, but we're just going to heal it all back up. Take a double KO. Yeah, this was a great showcase for the... Um, like, what the Urshfu forced out was a very, very shaky defensive option, and now they just can't win against Rage Powder Glacial Ant. So, look, that was a really good session. We end at 16.62. Um, we played, I believe, the... What was it? They were ranked about 40. We are now ranked nearly top 25. We're ranked uh, about top 30. 27th if we refresh the page so yeah really good set of games uh this was once again marco fierro's top eight or top four team as well as lorenzo's top eight team at the stockholm regional i think the most interesting parts of the team is definitely the urshifu i don't think the goldango is going to stick around personally i think there's definitely options that you can select that cover um zamazenta a little bit better while also not being so weak again like bring being borderline unbringable against a lot of other archetypes so yeah, I feel like very strong basis for a team. We're going to see very, many variations of it doing uh, well in the future. So looking to see some innovation in the Gold Angle slot. But I do love the Urshifu on this team. Volt Switch, Raging Bolt, also similarly very cool at cycling your very bulky pieces in and out. So yeah, once again, congrats to Marco. Check out the team in the description as well as his Twitter account. And with all that being said, peace, y'all.